Hey everybody, welcome to Lakeshore Church Online. My name is Frank, I'm one of the pastors here, and we're so glad that you decided to join us today. I don't know if someone invited you to check us out today, or maybe you just stumbled upon our website. Either way, today is going to be a great experience. Our service may be a little different than what you're used to, and that's okay, because at Lakeshore, our vision is to help people discover and develop a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. We'll be together for about 75 minutes today. During that time, you'll hear from our band, we'll have a time of worship, and then we'll have a communicator get up and teach us from the Bible. Church Online is about giving you a glimpse of what it's like here at Lakeshore. If you're close to our Greece location, we want to encourage you to come check us out after today. And if you're outside of the area, we want to encourage you to find a Bible-believing church close to your home. There are also team members live online, and they would love to chat with you. Feel free to say hi, and if you've got a prayer request, there's someone waiting to pray live with you. Again, we're so excited that you joined us today, and you have the opportunity to be a part of Lakeshore Church Online.
How many of you believe that this morning? That God does great things in our lives? Amen. Amen. John 3.16, a very famous passage of scripture that, that we've all heard at some point. Even if you haven't been part of the church, I'm sure you've heard it at some time. Like, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And what's so amazing about that passage is just it becomes this anthem for us. Uh, if you've placed your faith in Jesus, if you're, if you're a believer, it's just this anthem that we can shout out. And we're going to kind of put that to music this morning. We're going to teach you a new song that comes right from this verse. The verse talks about all those who are weary coming to the well that never runs dry. I'm going to sing it, then I want you guys to sing it back to me. It goes like this. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. All right, I want you guys to try that. All you are hurt, we are, are weary. All you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. All right, not bad. Now the chorus is just from that scripture verse, right from that scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us. I'm going to sing it. I want you guys to sing it back to me. It goes like this. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. We try it together. Shout this out as loud as you can. You guys ready? I want to hear you. We're going to sing that chorus one more time. Here we go. For God. All right. Okay, I, I have to be completely honest. I'm impressed. I did not think that that was going to happen. You guys just blew my mind right there. So I'm going to give you one more time to do that. I want you guys to shout this out as loud as you can. Here's your, here's your chance. Ready? Now, hold on a second. If this happens, if that person next to you is just really out of tune, that's okay. At least they're singing because you're not, because you're listening to them. So part of this is to see who's going to really engage in it, but also I'm going to know who's singing and who's not. And you're going to get a phone call, and then we're going to go from there. Okay? Here, let's try this together. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only. Whoever believes in him will live forever. All right. Now, I want to teach you a part. We didn't get to do this first service. I'm going to teach you the, this is the most important part of the song. And this part is, is, is really deep and meaningful to me. All right. And, and I'm going to sing this and then you, it's a call and answer. I'm going to sing this and then you guys do this. Now, pay attention because it's a little wordy and it's the real spiritual part. Okay. Here we go. 
Because God still loved the world, we have nothing to fear anymore. No fear of darkness or evil because of the work that he's done in our lives and he offers freely. So if you know this one, I want you to shout it out. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with songs of deliverance. From my enemies till all my fears are gone. Come on, church, you sing. Cause I'm no longer a slave to fear. Cause I am a child of God. And I'm no longer a slave. child of God from my mother's womb you 
you have chosen me and love has called my name and I've been born again into your family all your blood flows through my veins and I'm no singing out church come on because I no I'm no longer for I am a child of God oh, let's give him a shout of praise come on lift it up in this place lift it up oh, our God is good amen 
Amen. Oh, man, I love that. I love that verse. That we get to just, when we do that once in a while, we put that up on the screen, just Deuteronomy 31. That he is the one who goes before you. He is the one who is always there. He will never leave nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. And I know sometimes life will throw and just start lobbing things at us, and we don't know what's happening. But I do know that God is always there, and God is standing before us. He's standing with us. He's standing behind us to guide us through those things for us to grow from. Do you believe that this morning, church? Are you guys excited to be here today or what? Man, this is just that time where we can come together to refuel and refocus as we go into the rest of the week. I'm so excited that you guys are here with us. My name is Brian. I'm one of the pastors, and uh, this is just the favorite, favorite, our favorite part of the week. It's my favorite part of the week. Now, in uh, the seat back in front of you is a Connect card. If this is your first time here, I just want to be the first to say welcome. Hope to get to meet you after service. I want you to just take that card. Everyone take that card. Fill it out sometime throughout the service. We're going to collect it at the end. And today we're in for a very special treat. Our executive pastor, Pastor Frank, is going to be up here giving the message. And it's always a blessing when that happens. That's okay. You can clap. I see some people like, what? I don't know if I should clap. Does that make you feel better, Frank, that they're clapping? Okay. <laughs> Anyway, before we continue on, I want you to get out of your seats. Find five people that you don't know. Say good morning. Good morning, everyone. My name is Patrick, and I serve with our tech team. We are so glad to have you here today. We understand that God has called us to help people experience God's grace, to grow spiritually, to connect relationally in groups, and ultimately find out how our gifts can impact this world. We believe that we are called to share God's message of love all around the world, and you can do that right here at Lakeshore. Every time you make a donation at the Waves Cafe for a coffee, latte, smoothie, or treat, you are helping support mission work around the world. We just ask if there be no food, drink, or coffee in the auditorium. We want to try to create the best environment we can for people to encounter God. We want to help you grow stronger and deeper in your faith. And coming up this Thursday is our midweek Bible study. This is a time for us to dig deeper into the Bible and to learn how to apply it in our lives in a real and practical way. This Thursday, we will continue teaching our current midweek series, Fellowship with God. You can go to lakeshorechurch.org to learn more about our midweek Bible study. Here at Lakeshore, we believe that God wants us to do life together, and that's why we have groups for every season of life. One of those groups is Young Lives, New Life. This ministry provides friendship and support to our pregnant teens and teen moms. No matter where you live, you are welcome to attend. And on March 15th, they're having their annual Pamper Yourself event, and every woman is invited. We'll have different vendors from the area providing everything from massages, manicures, and so much more. Go to lakeshorechurch.org for more information and to get your ticket today. Once again, we are so excited you made it today. To find out more information or to sign up for anything coming up, just stop by our Next Steps area in the atrium right after service. everybody and welcome to Lakeshore. My name is Frank. I'm one of the pastors here. Welcome to you if you're joining us online. So glad you guys 
are with us today. You know, we sang a song a few moments ago, I am a child of God. I have a confession to make, though. I'm a child of the 80s. (laughs) Yes, it's true. My most formidable years as a teen and young adult took place in the 1980s. How many of you remember the 1980s? All right. How many of you are Gen Xers like me? Yeah, a few of you. All right. Let's see how well you remember the 1980s. Maybe you watched some movies like The Breakfast Club, (laughs) The Goonies, Karate Kid. Woohoo! How many of you carried a boombox around like this? (laughs) And now you are making your chiropractor very wealthy because you carried that thing around. How many of you made mixtapes? You painstakingly painstakingly wrote every song on that little piece of paper. And then when the tape player ate it, you were like, no! I spent hours working on that thing. Yep, you, uh, you millennials and my daughter is sitting here like, what's a cassette? <laughs> yeah, how about big hair bands like Bon Jovi? Yeah, Bon Jovi, Motley Crue. I liked Metallica, you know, so I was into the heavier stuff. But maybe you were into New Wave like Duran Duran, remember those guys? They're still on tour, believe it or not. U2, The Cure, Robert Smith with that crazy hairdo. And then there was this guy. Yeah, that was me in 1986. I thought I was cool. Notice the bandana. I thought it was like David Lee Roth or something like that. And never mind the spandex pants. I could probably fit one leg in that right now. But you know, the 80s made its mark on fashion. Would you agree with me, ladies? Right? How about ladies' fashion? Let's check out some of these ladies' fashions. Right? Madonna, the material girl, Joan Collins, and the wealth of dynasty. Remember the show uh, Lives of the Rich and Famous, right? What was, yeah, right. What was that guy's name? Robin, Le- Robin Leach, yes. And then, you know, you thought Meghan Markle made a, a wave with the royals. Princess Di, she was a trailblazer, right? Oh, my gosh. And then, of course, there was this toy that made the most ruckus and brought out the worst in parents at Christmas time. The Cabbage Patch Dolls, I hated those things. They were so ugly. And then this, this, this toy I threw against the wall more times. Here, here's a funny story. One time I threw it against the wall and I realized it comes apart. And then you could put it back together with all the colors on the same side. So, you know, I made my mom think I was a genius. But how about cartoons? Cartoons, one of my favorite cartoons from the 80s spoke to my warped sense of humor more than anything else was Gary Larson's The Far Side, right? Who, the way he personified animals, right? Bummer of a birthmark, Hal. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> tell me this guy was not on drugs. I mean, it's like, what? But then my favorite cartoon from the far side is this one right here. This guy's, who who looks, he's looking in his couch, and most of us find like Cheerios and coins, right? But Edgar finds his purpose, and his purpose is whatever that thing is he's holding in his hand. I had to explain that to you. I found that extremely funny. You obviously don't. (laughs) And that just ruins my whole message, so I'll see ya. Here's here's what Gary Larson did with this cartoon. He has illustrated a truth that every single human being struggles with, and that is this, a search for life's purpose. Each of us, deep down inside, if we're honest with ourselves, we want our lives to count for something. Each of us wants to see us adding value to this world before we go six feet under. Each of us, deep down inside, wants to know what purpose does my life serve? Last week, Pastor Dan spoke about two plans. Two plans. One was Satan's plan for your life. 
The other was God's plan for your life. And we took a look at John chapter 10, 10. And in this verse, it's our theme verse for the series. I'm going to bring it up on the screens here. It says this, the thief, which is Satan, the enemy, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. That's his plan for your life. But there's another plan, and that's the plan that Jesus has. And he says, Jesus says this, but I, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So Satan, the thief, steal, kill, and destroy. Steal, kill, and destroy what? Our significance. And where does his significance come from? I'm here to tell you today, significance only comes from Jesus Christ. It is found in a relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus came to give us life and give it to the full. The original Greek word for life is zoe in this case, zoe. It means more than just breath of life. It means spiritual life. It means an eternal life. And when Jesus said he came to give it to the full, he's not talking about a full calendar like many of us have, he's talking about significance, an exceptional life, a life that is complete, not not needing anything else, a life that goes beyond normal, a life that is rich and satisfying. And so Pastor Dan shared that a life of significance has three ingredients, purpose, passion, and people. Purpose, passion, and people. So today, we're going to unpack what the Bible has to say about a purposeful life. People searching for purpose is nothing new. Nothing new. In fact, there's a Jewish king in the Bible who lived in the 10th century B.C., and his name was Solomon. You may have heard of Solomon. Solomon was the third king of Israel. He was the son of King David, King David of like David and Goliath fame, that, that David. And he was a very successful king. He was the wisest man in all the world, the Bible tells us. God gave him that wisdom and said that there would be nobody, nobody to ever be as wise as Solomon was or will be. See, Solomon started off strong. He started off staying close to the Lord, his God. He was the one who built the temple in Jerusalem. God gave him great success as a king, allowing the economy under his reign to prosper. People grew in numbers. The military was strong, and Israel was feared amongst the nations and their enemies. But over time, Solomon's heart grew distant from God. He began to take his eye off of the things of God. The Bible tells us he had 700 wives, 300 concubines. Apparently, that's like a girlfriend. <clears throat> he was a player. Many of whom, many of a thousand women, a thousand women, many of whom were from foreign nations and they worshiped pagan gods. Listen, I can't even keep up with one wife. (laughs) One wife and two daughters. Forget it, I'm over the edge. This guy has a thousand wives. Oh my gosh. Solomon's dedication to the Lord his God diminished over time, and he began worshiping the many false gods of his foreign wives and concubines. His heart wandered so far from his creator that he lost all sense of God's purpose in his life. He's following what I call plan A. Plan A, your purpose apart from God. See, there is a plan, there is a plan. But it doesn't end well. I'm just going to shoot right to the point. In fact, Solomon said it himself in his old age. 
he summed up his life in this verse from a book that he penned called Ecclesiastes in the Bible. It's one of the books of wisdom. Some would question, a thousand wives, is that really wise? Anyway, apparently that was a cultural thing, who knew? But anyway, in Ecclesiastes 2.11, Solomon wrote this at the end of his life. Yet when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless. A chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. I want you to think for a moment about some of the appliances and tools that you have in your house. Many of you have refrigerators, right? Who doesn't have a refrigerator? Pretty much everybody has a refrigerator. So you know what I'm talking about, right? What is the purpose of a refrigerator? To keep food cold. That is the fundamental purpose. Cold temperatures help food stay, stay fresh longer. It's a fact, right? If a refrigerator does not keep your food cold, then the food will spoil. How, that's just the fundamental function of a refrigerator. Computers. Most of you have computers. Maybe you have a tablet. Maybe you have a smartphone. All kind of lumped in together. What is the fundamental purpose of a computer? To perform calculations store information, retrieve data, and process that data. A computer will only do what it is programmed to do. And so, is a computer designed to keep your food cold? No. There are some refrigerators that have computers in them now. I understand that. But the computer is not what keeps the food cold. It's the refrigeration system in a refrigerator that keeps it cold. Does, does a, uh, can a refrigerator perform calculations? No, it can't. And the moment you expect one to function like the other, you're going to become very frustrated and probably throw that device out because it's not fulfilling your perceived, its perceived purpose. You've mixed it up. And humans are the same as refrigerators and computers in that we have been created for a purpose. We were created by God to accomplish his purpose in our lives. And the moment we begin to operate outside of God's purpose for our lives and seek our own purpose apart from God, no thank you God, I don't need any direction in my life, I've got this myself. As soon as we start to do that, we start acting like a refrigerator who's trying to perform calculations. We become frustrated with ourselves. And this is exactly what happened with Solomon. Sure, Solomon accomplished great things. Just like today, there are people who accomplish great things in their lives. There are people who do great things in the world of medicine and technology and education and science. But Satan, the thief, he snuck in and he began to lure Solomon away from his true purpose in God. And he replaced it with a cheap imitation. Solomon lost sight of the why, why he does what he does, the purpose behind it. Satan got Solomon to worship other gods and he eventually forgot what he was created to do and why he was created to do what he does. Did he become egotistical? Did he become self-centered? Was he trying to impress others? Satan robbed him of his life, the true meaning of his life. When he said meaningless, meaningless, it's all meaningless, meaning the word meaningless translates to the word of vapor. It goes away like that. It's short-lived. Satan robbed Solomon's life of real value when he said nothing was gained under the sun. Of all the work that I did under the sun, it'll all be soon forgotten when the next new thing comes along. Solomon called his 
accomplishments, a colossal waste of time when he said it's a chasing after the wind. Have you ever seen the wind? It changes directions like that. It's impossible to chase the wind. It's a waste of time. So how do we find true, lasting purpose? I want you to take a look at plan B. Plan B is God's purpose together with you. And I want to give you six nuggets of truth to help you see God's purpose in your life. And the first one is this. Real simple. You were created for ministry. You were created for ministry. The Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians 2, chapter 10, he said this, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And so when Paul says we're God's workmanship, in other words, he's, other words, he's saying we're God's handiwork. Jesus Christ, our creator, he is the master artisan. He is the one creating you, his very masterpiece. He took the time to knit you together in his mother's womb, we're told in Psalm 139. Bit by bit, piece by piece, he created you with care and with quality workmanship. The word workmanship comes from a Greek word called poema. We get the word poem from it. I want you to think of your life this way. God sat down before you were born and he wrote out the story of your life. And he continues to write it today. What chapter is God writing in your life today? And this idea of doing good works, what is that all about? These good works are the purpose of your life. They are the things for which you were created to accomplish. They are not a condition for salvation. They are not a condition for eternal life. They are not a condition for getting into heaven, but they are a response, our response, to serve God because of what he did in our lives. And these were prepared for us before a single day of our lives ever came to be. You were created for ministry. Are you fulfilling that purpose? The second nugget of truth is this. You've been called. You've been called into ministry. 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10 says this. But you are the ones chosen by God. Let that sink in. You were chosen by God. Chosen for what? Chosen for the high calling of priestly work. Chosen to be a holy people. Holy meaning set apart for a purpose. You're God's instrument to do his work and speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he made in you from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. Did you ever think of yourself as a priest? We have a vendor here at Lakeshore. He, he does our computer work. I love this guy. He walks in, he calls me Father Frank. It's confession time with Father Frank. <laughs> you know, he's not half wrong, all right? I'm not a, obviously, I'm not a Roman Catholic priest. I grew up Roman Catholic, but I'm not a Roman Catholic priest. And that's not what Peter is saying here. But it's the idea that we are priests. In other words, we were created, we were called to do the work of the ministry for God. That's what a priest is. We have a high calling. You're holy. There are specific tasks waiting for you to do. You're called to tell others about the work that God did in your life. I can't tell your story. Who knows your story better than you? You need to tell others 
about what God is doing in your life, how he moved you, how he moved you from being rejected to accepted, how he made you from nothing into something. You've been chosen, you've been called, you've been created by God. Jordan Dick is one of our incredible volunteers in Lakeshore students. He's a young man, college student, and he understood this calling on his life at a young age. I want you to listen to this quote from Jordan. He said this, the harsh realities and dramatic changes most teenagers have to deal with in today's world can only be explained as one thing, a mission field. Not too long ago, I was a misfit teenager who never fit in any social circles at school, church, or otherwise. I realized that I'm naturally drawn to help those who are broken and to be the kind of person teenagers can confide in. This is why I know God has called me to serve in Lakeshore students, to help teens who are orphans or depressed or lost so that they may know Jesus Christ as their loving Lord and Savior. Jordan gets it. You have been called into ministry. Are you answering that call? Is the clue phone ringing? Or are you still sitting on the sidelines? Number three, you've been gifted to serve in ministry. Each one of you has been gifted to serve in ministry. You might be saying to yourself, what gifts could I possibly have that this place could use? Let me tell you. Peter again says this, each one of you should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. What gifts is Peter talking about? He's talking about spiritual gifts. And what are spiritual gifts? Spiritual gifts, let me tell you what they're not. They are not natural abilities. They are not skills that you have. Everyone has skills and abilities, right? Whether it's musical, maybe it's artistic, maybe you're a good teacher, maybe you're a good writer, maybe you can manage things or, or organize things. Maybe you're good at mechanical things or, or you like to design things or, or recruit people. Those are abilities and skills that you all have. We each have different skills and abilities, obviously. But spiritual gifts are different. You see, God is going to take, when you become a Christian, God takes your natural abilities and skills and he puts his super on top of it. And he makes your natural, and, your natural abilities and skills supernatural to accomplish his purposes. Spiritual gifts, you only receive them when you become a Christian. You receive them from the Holy Spirit at the moment you believe and receive Jesus Christ in your life. You receive all the gifts that you're going to have at that moment. Everyone has at least one gift. Every Christian has at least one gift, and God wants you to, to use it and develop it. Therefore, you should know, if you're a Christian, you should know what your gifts are. The Bible talks about 20 different spiritual gifts in Scripture. Everything from leadership, prophecy, shepherding, teaching, intercession, that's prayer, evangelism, faith, giving, administration, knowledge, wisdom, etc., etc. We teach a class here at Lakeshore specifically to help people understand what are their spiritual gifts. It's called Discover Your Purpose. The class is actually taking place today. We announced it last week. We went from like nine people to over 24 people signed up. We've never had to close out that class. We ran out of teachers. We actually split it in two. So Tom Saluzzo and I are, are teaching it in parallel today. But I've, I'm going sh to share with you more information. If you want to take Discover Your Purpose, we have another one coming up. Later on in the message, I'll share about that. So I want to encourage you, if you're a Christian... Do not ignore your gifts. 
know what they are, and use them. How would you feel if you, you know, on a miserable Friday in February, went to the mall, fought some parking, fought the cold, went and picked me a gift? You walked around the mall for an hour trying to figure out what does Frank want? What could he possibly use? for this gift. You found the perfect gift. You took it home. You wrapped it. You put a little bow on it. You bought a card to go with it. You cared to give the very best. You give me the gift, and then I say, thank you. And then I just put it aside. I never open it. In fact, it makes its way under my bed, still wrapped. How would that make you feel? Probably pretty lousy. You'd probably be ticked. I would. See, God specifically chooses spiritual gifts for each of us. And he is not glorified. He is not honored when we don't even open up our gifts and use them. He wants you to use his gifts in his church. Michelle Kremis is another awesome volunteer here at Lakeshore. Michelle serves on multiple teams. Listen to what she says about using her gifts. <clears throat> Whether it's making things neat and orderly for the office team, that's the gift of administration, smiling at folks while serving on the greet team, that's the spiritual gift of hospitality, or buying, making, and serving food for our catering team in Waves Cafe, that's the spiritual gift of service. I found purpose and satisfaction knowing I'm doing the things as a part of something greater than myself. She calls it God's handiwork. You have been gifted to serve in ministry. Know what your gifts are and put them to use. Number four, you've been empowered for effective ministry. Empowered for effective ministry. The book of Acts 1.8 says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. The Holy Spirit is the one that gives you the gifts, and therefore you will receive power to use those gifts from the Holy Spirit, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to all the ends of the earth. You see, when you become a Christian, the Holy Spirit is the one that makes you an effective tool in the hands of God, no matter where he has called you to serve, whether it's Jerusalem or whether it's Judea or Samaria or to all the ends of the earth. Let me put that in, in a little context for us here in Rochester. And you will be my witness in Rochester and in all of Monroe County and in New York State and to the ends of the earth. No matter where you go, no matter where you're called to serve, local or not, God will empower you to be an effective tool in his hands. And sometimes God calls us to serve in places that are outside of our comfort zone. I'm the first one to admit it. When I was taking classes at, at North Star Bible Institute, one of my classes was called street preaching. We had to go to downtown Rochester on Clinton Avenue and stand at a bus stop with a bunch of people waiting around and I just opened up my Bible, and we were expected to just start preaching. That was tough. That was intimidating. We got some awfully strange looks. We had people yelling at us. But when somebody listened, you could see the light bulb go off in their mind. You could see that God was touching their heart. Was it uncomfortable? Yes. But God gave us the strength to do it. The first time I went and spoke at the Open Door Mission, I was terrified. Terrified. What do I have in common with these folks? How am I going to reach these folks? I know nothing about what it means to be homeless. 
I know nothing about being addicted to drugs, but God gave me the words to speak. And I've been able to go back a handful of times since then and be an effective tool used by God. The first time I had to visit somebody in Monroe County Jail and minister to them, man, that sucked. Can I be honest? That was like the most darkest, dreadful place I had ever been. But God empowered me to be an effective tool in his hand in that moment. Where is God calling you? God doesn't want us to just serve within the walls of the church and be a country club. He wants us to make a difference in our community. He wants us to reach our neighbors. You may be thinking, oh, you don't know my neighbors. Maybe they need Jesus too. Maybe you're being called overseas. We have a group of people who have gone to Nicaragua, to Mozambique, Africa. Me, I choose mission trips like Italy. <laughs> the food is horrible. Wherever God calls you, he will empower you. And on March 1st, we're having a missions event here in our atrium in two weeks, two Sundays, right after service. We're going to bring in several of our local partners in ministry who minister out in our community, and we'll have representatives from some of the foreign mission trips that we've gone on. Would love to have you guys learn about that, because it's not just about serving at Lakeshore. It's about going out into the world and being the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number five, you are needed on God's ministry team. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says this, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. You see, the body of Christ, that's a term that means all Christians together making up what we call the church. The church is not the building. The church is a living organism. It's the body of believers together. That's what makes up the church. And just as our physical bodies have different parts, right? We've got legs and arms and wrists and fingers. Just as our physical bodies have many parts, so does the body of Christ. It is made up of many people having different gifts and skill sets to do the work of the ministry. You see, it's not up to the pastors and the staff to do everything. I don't know what your church background is, and maybe that's how it was at your church, but that's not how it is here at Lakeshore. We want to equip the people of the church to do the work of the church. The pastor's job is not to meet everyone's needs. We cannot visit everyone in the hospital. We cannot bring a meal when everyone, anyone, everyone is sick. It's not our job to meet everyone's needs. However, it is our job to make sure that everyone's needs are met. The Bible tells us clearly that the leadership of the church is to equip the people of the church to do the work of the ministry. You folks are the people of the church. And we want to equip you. We want to partner with you. One of the greatest pleasures that I have as a pastor is helping people discover the purpose that God has created them for and help them get plugged into a ministry team so they can begin to exercise their gifts. From experience, I can tell you there is no greater satisfaction than when you are living in the center of God's will. I don't always hit that mark, but there is no greater satisfaction when you do. At Lakeshore, God has called us to share the life-changing message of the gospel with as many people as possible. And there are thousands of people in our community, thousands of people in our area that need to hear this message, and we need every person that calls Lakeshore their home to partner with us to accomplish the work that God is calling us to do as a church. While not everyone will be the person on stage teaching from the Bible, we need musicians, 
to lead us into worship. We need people to run technology to help us clearly see and hear the services. We need greeters and parking lot attendants to make people feel welcome when they arrive on our campus. We need people to serve drinks and food and make people feel at home in our cafe. We need people who love teens and kids and young moms and want to encourage them in their faith. We need people to keep our building clean so that when the first time guests are arrive, they find a clean toilet and they find themselves feeling a little extra special and valued. We need people to provide first aid when a guest is not feeling well. We need security people to help us feel safe when we're in this building. We need people who love to pray for the needs of the church and visit the sick in hospitals providing encouragement and support. We need people to lead small groups and make this big church feel just a little bit smaller. If I wasn't direct enough, let me shoot straight with you. At Lakeshore, you are needed on God's ministry team. And next Sunday, we're going to have an event after service called the Volunteer. And you can go around the church to where our different ministry teams serve, and you can learn what serving opportunities exist in the church. I'll share more on that in a moment. The last point I want to drive home is this. You will be rewarded for serving in ministry. You will be rewarded for serving in ministry. Matthew 25, 23 says this. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. You see, there's a reward for those who serve in ministry, not only while they're here on earth, but also one day when they stand before God in heaven and he will say those words, well done, good and faithful servant. I could sit here and tell you all the ways that I've been rewarded by serving, but I'd rather share the words of Tom Barber, who serves in Lakeshore Kids. Tom is also known as Mr. Tom. He said, I love serving in Lakeshore Kids. I am the one who gets blessed every time I serve, showing the love of God to these kids. Tom is the guy that sits right down on the floor with the kids building relationships with them, helping them experience the love of Jesus Christ. You will be rewarded for serving in ministry. Have you experienced that blessing in your life? So as I wrap up, where do we go from here? That's great information, Frank. Thanks so much. I want to know what's your plan. What is your plan? I'm going to give you three things that you can start implementing today. Number one, discover what your gifts are. Maybe you're one of the 24 taking Discover Your Purpose today. Congratulations, that is a start. Unfortunately, that class is closed, but if you want to take a Discover class, Pastor Vince's Discover Lakeshore class is still open, and you can hear directly from him how he and Sue started Lakeshore, and why we do what we do. The Discover Purpose class that Tom Saluzzo and I teach will be offered again on May 3rd, and you can register on our website, lakeshorechurch.org slash discover. I want to encourage you guys to discover what your gifts are. Maybe Maybe, you know what, you have an idea of what you're good at. That's a starting point. That's a starting point. Figure it out. Do what you can to discover what your gifts are. Number two, I want you to seek a ministry team that matches your gifts. As you look around this place, there's a pretty good chance that every ministry team is looking for more people to serve. We might look like we got it all together, but I assure you we don't. We are definitely looking for help in all of our ministry teams. Seek a ministry team. Look around you, whether it's the music team, whether it's the cafe, maybe it's grounds and facilities. What skills, what gifts do you have 
that we can use at the church to accomplish God's purposes so we can reach more people for the gospel. And the third thing I want to encourage you to do is attend the volunteer next Sunday. Come back next Sunday. Attend the volunteer. We'll have 20 ministry teams represented around the building with a list of open positions that they have. And you can sign up for a next step opportunity. You can try giving a ministry a shot. Give it a shot. See how it goes. I want to encourage you with those three things. Discover your gifts. Seek a ministry. Attend the volunteer next week. Because here's the deal. When you are living a purposeful life for God, when you are using your gifts, three things happen. Number one, God is glorified. Number two, the church will thrive. We can't do it, just, just the pastors and the staff, we can't do it by ourselves. The church will thrive when we all use our gifts. Who better to minister to a mom who loses a baby than a woman who previously lost a child? Who better to minister to someone who's struggling with alcoholism than somebody who has walked that path before? You are needed. The church will thrive when you use your gifts. And the third and final thing is you will be fulfilled. You'll find fulfillment knowing that God is using you to reach more people for eternity. Listen, I don't know where you're at. Serving is great, but it doesn't replace knowing Jesus Christ personally in your life. Serving is great, but it doesn't replace spending time with God and reading his Bible. That's how you get to know God. And so if you're here today and you've never invited Jesus in your life, if you're here today and you're just like Edgar, you've been looking in the couch and you're trying to find your purpose, but all you're finding are coins and Cheerios, I want to encourage you invite Jesus Christ in your life. Jesus came to show us the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no one comes to the Father except through him. Is it exclusive? Yes, it is. He wants our hearts exclusively. He wants you to believe that he is the Son of God that he died on the cross for your sins. He paid the penalty for you so you don't have to. And you reap the benefit. It's forgiveness of sin. It's freedom like we sang about. You become a child of God. You will have eternal life with him. And you'll get the satisfaction of living a purposeful life. And all you have to do is just invite him in. You just have to pray. Pray with me right now. You just have to say, Jesus Christ, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you are who you say you are. And I need you in my life. I, I can't earn my own salvation. I need you. I need the work you did on the cross. Forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for my rebellion. Forgive me for seeking purpose without you. But I, I invite you in my life right now. I recognize who you are. I receive you in my life. I receive your forgiveness of sin. I turn from my evil ways. And I want to follow you all the days of my life so I can have eternal life with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for making me a child of God. And Father, for everyone else that's in the room, for those who are already Christians, who are seeking purpose in their lives, I pray you help them to understand that they were created for ministry, that they were called for ministry, that they've been gifted for ministry, that they've been empowered for ministry, that they're needed in ministry, and that they will be rewarded when they serve you with their gifts. Thank you, Father, for these things. We ask them in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Pastor Frank. You know, it's all about the, the, the purpose that, that God has designed us for. It's not that we're just trying to fill a need because we need help. It's so much further than that. It's all about how God has designed you, what his will is, and how you're going to be part of it using the, the God-given gifts that he's given you. And we're just, uh, we're so excited to, to be able to help in any way that we can through that. So earlier on in the service, I talked about a Connect card, and if you filled that out, I want to ask you guys to uh, drop that in the offering in just a moment. If you are prepared to worship through your tithes and offerings, we're going to give you that opportunity right now. And again, are so thankful for your partnership. There's multiple ways that you can, you can partake in that. But that's what, that's what allows us to continue to share the gospel. And it's, it's further than just these walls here. It's, it's out to the rest of the world, and we just want to try to reach as many people as many people as we possibly can. So thank you guys for that for that partnership. And as Pastor Frank had mentioned several times, um, Discover Lakeshore is still open. So if you want to figure out really what this church is all about, why it was started, I want to invite you guys to that at 1 o'clock. And as that's finishing up, I want to ask everyone to stand. I'm going to just pray a prayer over you, and we're going to just sing of one more time of the greatness of God and the great things that he does in our lives because we see it every single day. So, Father, we're just so grateful. We are so thankful. We are in awe of what you're going to do and how you have uniquely crafted each of us, God. Continue to go before us. Continue continue to empower us. And Lord, we're just so, so humbled by you. Let it, pray that you would hear our song today, hear this worship, hear all of this as we continue to move forward in your will. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing hallelujah. watching Lakeshore Church Online. We hope it was a great experience for you. If you have any questions or you want to check out some of the other events happening at Lakeshore, visit our website, lakeshorechurch.org, for more information. Again, if you live in the Rochester, New York area, we'd love to invite you to come visit us next Sunday at either the 9 or the 11 a.m. service. Thanks so much and hope you have a great week.